finally the long-awaited video is out i am sharing all of my gear that i packed to climb mount kilimanjaro the highest peak in africa if you are on this channel for the first time i did make a full video documenting my whole adventure on mount kilimanjaro from start to finish you can find it right here and i also shared another video where i shared 10 tips to help you climb mount kilimanjaro even if you are a beginner so i will link to that as well in the first comment but for this video today we're going to go over the gear so if this is an adventure that you are interested in you will find value in this hopefully there are two bags that you will absolutely need we'll start with the first one that is going to be your big duffel bag right here i have a north face 90 liter duffel bag this is the bag that the porters are going to be carrying on the mountain because you're not going to be logging all of your gear on a daily basis from camp to camp so the porters are going to be carrying your big duffel bag and they do have a weight limit you should not be exceeding 15 kilos on this duffel bag in this duffel bag you're going to be packing all of your gear that you're not going to be carrying on a daily basis in your daily backpack but in addition to that your sleeping bag are going to be in here the company that you're climbing with they are going to provide you with a sleeping bag i noticed however that their sleeping bags are pretty bulky so they are going to occupy the majority of the space on your backpack so you have to account for that i hate that we have to start our mornings this way the whole width of the duffel bag it's crazy i still have tons of things that need to go in there the rule is really just pack things that you absolutely need on the mountain like i said they are going to carry the duffel bag 15 kilos is the limit and this one is 90 liters you shouldn't go with any duffel bag that's lower than 90 liters because that's not going to be enough and i'm going to be linking to every piece of gear on this video you will find it in my kits in the description box and in the first comment three things that you want to think about when you are picking a duffel bag the weight limit 15 kilos 90 liters capacity and you want to make sure that it's waterproof because even though the porters will do a good job to keep your gear protected if it's going to be raining on the mountain still making sure that the duffel bag is waterproof is important so that's the first bag the second bag is going to be your day pack this is the one that you will be carrying every single day for multiple hours the one that i have right here is an rei trail 40 liters for women i chose this one specifically for mount kilimanjaro uh, so 40 liters is going to be good enough for the mountain i think you should be good if even you go with 30 liters to make sure that you have enough space for water and everything that you need on your day hikes uh, one of the things that i find very important when picking a day pack is a frame that's pretty comfortable and that was definitely number one thing that i was Looking for when i was picking this bag and this one is pretty comfortable it also has a pouch inside of this backpack for your water bladder which i'm going to talk about in a little bit here and the one thing that i really like about this backpack is that when you open it you can open it all the way so it's really easy for you to go through your bag and find anything that you need to find like i said this is where you would place your water bladder uh, before I talk about water bladders, I do have another bag that I want to share with you. This is one of my favorite day packs, 20 liters Sea to Summit Ultra Seal Day Pack. And let me show you how that works. It's a collapsible day pack. And there you go. You have a 20 liter day pack. The reason I packed this one with me because A, it's lightweight and also there is a day during your trek where you take acclimatization hikes and usually you would get to camp where you're going to be spending the night and then you would take another or an additional hike that can be one hour, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. So instead of taking your heavy backpack, you can just use this one. You can throw a couple of snacks in there. You can throw an emergency kit or a water bottle and that should be good enough just to give your back some rest and when it's collapsed i usually just use a carabiner and i would hook it to my outer backpack and that works pretty well now that we are done with the bags now i want to talk about the water system i did mention the water bladder 
this is the one that I usually use for day hikes or for backpacking this is an Osprey three liters three liters is going to be the right amount of water that you will need almost every day just to make sure that you are staying hydrated on the mountain hydration is very important especially with high altitude sickness it helps tremendously when you are keeping yourself hydrated so um, you would usually fill this one with water and uh, if you're questioning how do you get fresh water on the mountain usually every morning right when you wake up before you go to your dining hall we would throw our water bladder or water bottle in a big bin and then the porters they would purify water on the mountain and then they would fill your water bladder and bottles and give them to you once you are ready to to start hiking so uh, this would be three liters um, I was showing you how you can fit it in your backpack and then also with the water bladder it just makes it easy for you to drink water straight from your bag without having to open your bag or reach for your water bottle or ask someone to give you your water bottle it's just an easy effective way but in addition to your water bladder you are going to need a Nalgene water bottle for one reason on summit day it's going to be extremely cold on the mountain that the tube on your water bladder because it's exposed it's going to most likely freeze so you're not going to be able to drink water directly from the bladder that's why you want a Nalgene water bottle that you can fill with water keep it in your backpack keep it warm enough so that you can drink water whenever you want to uh, for me personally I also like having an Nalgene water bottle so that if I want to put any electrolytes or noon tablets I'm going to show you that in a little bit here uh, I throw the noon tablets in my Nalgene bottle and then I keep the water in my bladder just normal water when it comes to your sleeping system you really don't have to worry about much because the company you're traveling with they are going to take care of the tent so when you get to camp the tent is going to be already set up for you which is incredible and then I mentioned the sleeping bag is something that's going to be in your duffel bag so the only thing that you really have to think about is a pillow this is an inflatable pillow from sea to summit it's pretty lightweight pretty compact and it's nice to have something to put your head on there it is trekking poles are one of my favorite pieces of gear they are going to make your time on the mountain pretty pleasant they are super helpful just to give you that extra point of contact when you are going uphill and also when you are going downhill because that's when most of injuries happen you are going downhill it's pretty steep you want something to help you so with trekking poles you can coordinate with the company that you are climbing with to help you rent a pair of trekking poles uh, for me personally I like to take my own trekking poles these are the ones that I use from black diamonds I use them on many treks and they work incredibly well so just a quick tip when you are flying you can't keep your trekking poles in your carry-on they have to be in your checked bag and when you are throwing them in your checked bag which most likely is going to be your duffel bag just make sure that they have a rubber at the tip to protect it because the tip is pretty sharp and it can rupture your duffel bag and you don't want that to happen so this is going to protect your bag and your trekking poles now let's talk about shoes in the mountain two pair of shoes that I think you need the first one is going to be your main hiking boots on the mountain uh, the one that I'm showing you right here is the Solomon Ultra X Mid Gore-Tex for women. I bought this specifically for Mount Kilimanjaro and they work very, very well. They are becoming one of my favorite hiking boots. These hiking boots are Gore-Tex, so they are waterproof, they are very comfortable and they have good grip. So when you are looking for hiking boots, uh, you want to first of all make sure that you're not buying new shoes and you're taking them straight to hike the mountain. You want to make sure that you are spending some time on the trail just to familiarize yourself with the, your hiking boots to make sure that they are comfortable and that they are the right fit for you. I also like to pack an extra pair of laces if you need them. And then the second pair is going to be something that you can wear around camp when you finish hiking for the day and you just want to walk around camp to go to the restroom or to just socialize with people you are climbing with and that can be your sneakers or running shoes or approach shoes uh, this is the one that I like they look pretty beat up but these are my camp shoes the reason I like these is because they are pretty lightweight and they don't take a lot of space so usually I just make sure that I am wearing uh, some comfortable warm socks and they do a good job and I usually just pack them in my C2 Summit Ultra Seal waterproof bag since we're talking about footwear it's also important to pack trail gaiters with you so usually trail gaiters are useful when it's raining on the mountain 
but I found them to be useful for something else. When you are making your way down from the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, you are going to be hiking through loose scree. And usually these small rocks are going to sneak into your shoes and it's not going to be comfortable. So with wearing your trail gaiters around your legs, they are going to keep the rocks out, which is pretty useful. We are going to talk right now about clothing. This is the most exciting part because I know that there are a lot of questions about what to wear on the mountain. Now, the rule is because you are going to be hiking in different climate zones, you are going to be in the rainforest where you might get sweaty, it might rain, and then you're moving to the alpine desert and then the Arctic zone, the temperature is going to be constantly changing. And so you want to make sure that you are dressed in layers so that you can easily add on or remove as necessary. So that's the rule that you want to follow. So I'm going to show you right now everything that I packed for lower body and then upper body, and then we'll talk about soft and then we'll talk about headwear. So for my lower body, first of all, you want to make sure that you have enough clean underwear for your seven days on the mountain. You want to make sure that it's something that you're comfortable with and something that's breathable. And for the pants, I did pack three different pants on the mountain. And in retrospect, I didn't need all three of them. These are just the hiking pants. I have a few more right here. So the first two this is something that is lightweight, something that you can wear on a simple, normal day hikes. These are, uh, I think this one is Colombia. The other one is also Colombia. I'm going to link to all of them. This is pretty lightweight, pretty breathable, and then also you can roll it to wear it as a short, even though I don't even recommend packing shorts for Mount Kilimanjaro just because um, with the sun and then also with some bugs in uh, the rainforest zone. Two uh, lightweight hiking pants, which I could have packed just one of them. And then the second one is a thicker version of my hiking pants. These are my favorite hiking pants from Prana. They are extremely comfortable, but then at the same time, they are thick enough to provide you with some warmth. So these are the hiking pants. And then in addition to that, I did have my base layer. This is very, very useful. This is going to be your best friend on the mountain, especially on summit day. So this base layer is from Smart Wool. It's Merino Wool. And Merino Wool is known for incredible properties. It's breathable, it's lightweight, it wicks moisture, and it's just the best option for many of these layers that I'm going to be sharing with you in a little bit here. It does get a little bit expensive, but if you are going to uh, plan to do a lot of treks, this is a great investment. So this is the base layer that you could wear to keep yourself warm in the mountain when it gets really cold. And then next I have fleece pants. These are from REI. And these fleece pants, I would usually wear them to sleep uh, on the mountain, but then also on summit day. I will share with you later on everything that I wore for summit night or summit day, just so that you have an idea. And in addition to my fleece pants, these are rain pants. Also from REI, uh, this is more of a shell just to make sure that it's protecting all of your other layers if it rains and also protects you from the wind. Okay, so that's it for lower body. Now, we'll talk about upper body. Sports bra for the ladies out there. When you are choosing sports bra for the mountain, you wanna make sure that it's something that is super comfortable for you. Nothing that's really tight or it's going to prevent you from breathing because breathing at high elevation is already difficult at it and you don't want something that's going to be super tight around your chest. You don't want something with a lot of padding. I got these from REI. They are made by Patagonia and they were extremely comfortable. Just not a lot of pressure on my chest and they do have some padding, uh, but nothing too crazy. Uh, you could pack between two or three. It's up to you for me personally. I just didn't feel the need to pack many. I only had uh, one bra on the mountain. Now, for the first few days on the mountain, when it's comfortable and it's not really cold, you want something that's, um, you know, breathable, something that you're comfortable with. It could be uh, a t-shirt. I personally like to go with long sleeves just to protect my skin when it's really hot out. So with this shirt, for example, I was wearing it the first day on the mountain. 
I can roll the sleeve just to make it more breathable and then if it gets super warm I can even uh, unbutton it and uh, continue on with my hike um, so that's for the first day on the mountain uh, now with the layers um, I talked a little bit about merino wool uh, I had two layers from merino wool merino wool is just so incredible with all of the property that it has when it comes to wicking moisture keeping you warm and even when you are sweating while wearing merino wool it's not going to get wet and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people choose to go for merino wool on the mountain even though it's a little bit expensive uh, but it's a good investment if you are going to be using uh, these layers for multiple treks and outdoorsy adventures in the future so i had a long sleeve layer uh, from uh, smart wool as well and then the other one inside out but uh, it's got a nice gray pattern it's also smart wool so depending on how cold it is outside i would either wear one of them or the other or two of them at the same time definitely for summit night i had to wear both of them um i will talk more about summit day so these are two layers this is just an extra this is not merino wool but just an extra layer that i would usually wear to camp i highly recommend that you dedicate a set of clothing just to sleep uh, when you get to camp so maybe just one pair of pants and then a top that you can wear and it's clean and fresh and then uh, the next one is a warm sweater uh, that I wore for uh, summit night on top of the other layers this one is from Patagonia super warm super comfortable I really like this one moving on to the bulky stuff I've got a puffy jacket so this puffy jacket is usually good for cold mornings when you are taking your breakfast before you start trekking and also for uh, summit nights this puffy jacket is one that i got from rei it was actually on sale i think i ended up buying it for like 30 dollars, maybe even less uh, super comfortable super practical so you would wear that on top of your other layers and then finally for uh, upper body is my rain jacket this is a Gore-Tex rain jacket. So Gore-Tex has good properties to keep you protected from the rain, which is pretty important. It also works as a windbreaker when it's really windy on the mountain. So I would wear the puffy jacket and then the rain jacket on top of it. Uh, it's got a hoodie to keep your head warm and protected as well. And talking about uh, rain, I forgot to mention with the backpacks, you want to make sure that you have something to cover your backpack with when it's raining outside uh, with the bag that i just showed you a little bit ago it has a rain cover that comes with it which is pretty neat if not you will have to purchase or you have to pack uh, a rain cover for your backpack specifically you can also pack a poncho so this is a poncho that i packed with me but unfortunately i didn't even use it on the mountain so it was just extra weight but i'm sure with heavy rain uh, a poncho can come in handy socks now when it comes to socks i like to have fresh clean socks for every day on the mountain i don't have all of the socks that i packed right here but what i like to do just to avoid any foot issues or blisters i like to wear liners underneath my wool socks so this is a pair of liners they don't look the cleanest but i would pack a few liners and then on top of my liners i would wear my wool socks so just a few pair of socks for every day if you can and then a pair perhaps when you are going to bed at camp i did find this pair of socks that comes with a built-in liner and we are absolutely in love with these because they are super comfortable you can see that there is a built-in liner inside so instead of packing one liner and then one pair of socks it's two in one which is great and then the next one you definitely want to make sure that you have heavy duty smart wool mountaineering socks for your summit night these are extremely warm and comfortable and they are going to be your best friend for summit night headwear i packed a hat that i was wearing the first few days on the mountain which is just a typical hat to keep the sun off and then i also packed a lightweight buff you can use your buff in multiple ways i would usually use it to keep my neck warm i would usually use it as a headband or just to protect my ears and my head early in the morning if it's really cold and i did have 
another hat. This is also a merino wool hat that worked extremely well. And it's uh, interesting because if I were to compare this merino wool hat to this heavier, warmer hat, this one is doing a better job and it's pretty lightweight when you compare it to this one. I packed both of them. And then I also had a balaclava. It looks pretty lightweight. You will probably see a lot of uh, hikers or mountaineer packing really heavy balaclavas for summits like this, but this was pretty warm and it did the job. I wanna talk about gloves. These are three different pairs of gloves. Well, it's two, but it's really three. So the first one is going to be your liners, your lightweight gloves. This is what you would wear early in the morning or late at night if it's cold outside. They are super comfortable. They're also from Smart Wool. Like we bought a lot of things from Smart Wool, but they were absolutely worth it. So that's going to be your lightweight liner. And then the next one is going to be your heavy summit day gloves. These are heavy duty uh, gloves. Uh, you could choose between gloves of this sort or mittens if you want, whatever you're comfortable with. But the way it works, and let me just show you the inside. There we go. Now it's two different pairs. So they do have this pretty warm layer that's going to provide you with all of the warmth that you need. And then on top of that, there is this protective shell for rain, wind, etc., etc. It gets pretty cold on summit day. And so even with your liner, you're going to pretty much wear your liner and then this layer and then the protective shell and it's going to be still cold. But we're going to solve that problem in a little bit. Just to do a recap of everything that I wore during summit day, which is the coldest and the most difficult day out of your seven days on the mountain or however long you're spending on the mountain, it's going to be the most difficult day. Obviously, every season is different. Some months are colder than the others, so you have to plan accordingly. Uh, but for the time that we climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, this is what I wore. So first, I had my base layer, my merino wool base layer. And then I have a lightweight hiking pant on top of it. And then I had my fleece pants. And then I had my rain pants. That's for my lower body. For the upper body, I had my sports bra. I had one merino wool layer. I had an extra layer on top of it. I had my Patagonia sweater. My puffy jacket. And my rain jacket. And with the hats, I had my balaclava, and then I had my merino wool hat. And I think in the beginning, around midnight, that's the time where you start climbing, I had my other hat on top of it, but soon later I removed it. And then for the socks, I had my liners and my mountaineering socks. For the gloves, I had my liner, and then my heavy duty mountaineering gloves. I did pack two clear bags like this, one of them for my toiletries and then one for medication. So we'll talk first of all about medication and then we'll get back to toiletries. So any medication that you usually take on the mountain, usually this one stays with me in my day pack. And then in here, uh, because you are in Tanzania, you might be taking malaria pills and then Diamox for high altitude. It's a personal choice whether you want to take Diamox just to help you with altitude sickness or not. But in here, I had my malaria pills, I had my Diamox. And then in addition, there are a few things that you should pack with you, some painkillers, just to help you with headaches. At elevation, you are going to be experiencing some headaches. And uh, I also recommend uh, packing some anti-diarrhea pills in case you need them. Uh, I had some Tums with me uh, because I usually have a lot of stomach pain when I am at elevation. It usually happens when I'm climbing at 14,000 feet and up, loss of appetite, and then my stomach just hurts. So I packed a bunch of Tums that were super helpful. I also have my noon tablets in here just to help you with electrolytes. What I mentioned earlier, just throw in one tablet or two in my Nalgene water bottle just to make sure that I am recouping when it comes to losing salt through sweat. So it's extremely important. 
and I did have a water purifier. Uh, I thought that I might need it on the mountain, but it was not necessary because like I mentioned, the porters are going to be purifying the water and filtering the water and make it ready and available to you every morning. So that wasn't necessary. So that's my medication bag. Uh, now for toiletry, I feel like it's a personal choice when it comes to what you really need on the mountain and your level of comfort. So I did pack a clear bag. This is what Alex packed, which I really like. This is a Sea to Summit toiletry bag. Pretty lightweight and you can also hang it in or around the tent and it's got a nice little mirror. Alex told me that he actually shaved on the mountain. That was pretty useful. Um, so you could think about a toiletry bag like this, uh, but just when it comes to things that I packed and that I found to be helpful, uh, the first one are bathing wipes. So when you're going to be on the mountain for seven days, you're not going to be showering every day or showering at all. You don't have access to showers. Uh, the porters or your guys, they are going to be providing you with a bucket of warm water at the end of every day, right outside of your tent that you can use to freshen up and clean your face, clean your hands and your feet. But sometimes it's just not enough for some people. So I packed these bathing wipes. This package had eight of them, which is exactly the amount of days I needed bathing wipes for. I think there's one more left in here, but you can use these wipes uh, just to clean your body. So I would use them to clean under my armpits, under my, my chest, just my whole body. And they kept me pretty clean. And it was amazing just to see every wipe at the end of you cleaning yourself and it gets pretty dirty. Uh, so highly recommend the bathing wipes. I also had packed my down there wipes just to keep things clean. Um, these are just some other type of body wipes that we exchange with some friends around the camp, but they serve the same purpose, also body wipes. On my toiletry bag, let's see what we have. This is not everything that I packed for the mountain, but I kind of tried to recreate the majority of the things that I packed. I had toothbrush, toothpaste, hand sanitizer. Uh, now, when you are on the mountain, you will have access to uh, a toilet uh, that uh, the company that you're climbing with will set at camp. They usually have toilet paper uh, in that toilet, but then also when you start trekking, they provide you with a roll of toilet paper, or you can pack your own. I honestly didn't pack my own. They just gave me one and I kept using it. Uh, hand sanitizer, just to clean whenever you need to. Uh, floss. You really want to make sure that you are protecting your skin. Applying it once a day is not enough. You have to reapply every now and then because the sun is pretty hot, especially when you get to the Alpine desert, you're going to be pretty exposed the majority of the time. So sunscreen, I had another sunscreen. Uh, chopstick, very, very important to make sure that you are keeping those lips protected. Nail clipper, just in case you need it. Um, I think that was hand sanitizer. And then I personally like to pack some sort of uh, moisturizing cream or moisturizer because your face gets dry, your skin is gonna get dry. So you, um, I think in this one, I probably packed coconut oil uh, just because it's versatile and you can use it for so many things. You can use it for your hair, for your skin. Uh, you can use it to like even clean your face if you want to, just keep everything moisturized. So that was coconut oil. I also packed deodorant and I packed uh, dry shampoo. I didn't use dry shampoo at all because at some point it just doesn't matter anymore. And I think that was pretty much it for uh, my toiletry. A few more things that are pretty important to have with you. A first aid kit. Do you really, really have to have it with you? Not really because the guys will most likely have an emergency kit, but I personally just like to have my own things. This is probably less than $9 from Amazon. It's got some alcohol wipes, got some gauze, got an emergency blanket, safety pins, etc., etc. Uh, I think it's pretty important to have one. I also packed some hand warmers. And I did end up using hand warmers for summit day. I placed some of them underneath my gloves because your hands are going to get really, really cold. You can also pack some foot warmers and then place them in your shoes if you want to, but I wasn't too comfortable to add anything to my shoes. Uh, hand warmers can come in handy. Hand warmers can come in handy. Hand, handy hand warmers. My favorite piece of gear. Do you know what this is? 
This is a pee bottle. Do you really need the pee bottle on the mountain? Not really because there is a toilet out there for you, but some nights it can get really cold that even walking to the toilet can get pretty difficult. So I did keep a pee bottle with me in the tent and so I would use it throughout the night whenever I have to and then in the morning I would empty it in the toilet and it honestly makes a big difference. I know probably on Mount Kilimanjaro we don't really need it but I know in more technical complicated climbs having a pee bottle is a good idea. A headlamp. You definitely want to make sure that you have a headlamp with you and you have enough extra batteries because during summit night or summit day it's going to be dark i mentioned that you're going to start climbing around midnight for many hours to come so you want to make sure that you have a good reliable headlamp with you uh, this is a new one that i bought right before climbing kilimanjaro black diamond and it works really well I also like the fact that uh, this headlamp has a red light mode, which is pretty convenient if you were to wake up in the middle of the night and then you have your teammates sleeping around you, you don't wanna bother them with strong light. So the red light mode is pretty convenient. So I packed two sunglasses with me. The first one was just a generic athletic sunglasses that I was wearing for the first few days. And then once we got to the Alpine desert, more exposure and then during summit day i was wearing my julbo sunglasses that i absolutely absolutely love these are mountaineering sunglasses good uv protection they just help you to make sure that your eyes are staying protected with all of that sunshine and sun ray i absolutely love these and then i would just have them in this case right here with a small carabiner and i would hook it to my backpack. An emergency blanket right here, which is already present in the kit that I mentioned. A few random bags right here, because in Tanzania and specifically on Mount Kilimanjaro, you are not supposed to have any plastic bags with you on the mountain just to help save and preserve the environment. So I had these reusable bags. Uh, I think I used this one for probably some snacks which snacks are very important. I don't have any right now because probably went through all of them, but you want to make sure that you have enough snacks on the mountain. It can be bars, it can be nuts, it can be dates, chocolate, whatever it is that you prefer to have on the mountain because you also start experiencing loss of appetite at a certain altitude. And even though you have food provided to you throughout the day, it's probably a good idea to have food that you like so that you're not staying hungry. Now, when it comes to the food situation, on the mountain there is a dining hall where you and everyone that you're climbing with will get together for breakfast there is enough food it's very appetizing food there are a lot of options regardless of what uh, uh, restrictions you have when it comes to your diet so you just have to let the company know ahead of time if you have any dietary restrictions and they are going to accommodate you when it comes to lunch there are days where they would set camp and you will have a hot lunch but there are also days where they would provide you with the same sandwich or a meal um, halfway through that you can just take a couple of minutes to to have your meal and there is always dinner at the end of the night which is always nice now i want to talk briefly about electronics climbing mount kilimanjaro is a once in a lifetime adventure so you want to make sure that you have a camera with you or a certain way that you can document your adventure on the trail i'm not going to go over my camera gear because i have listed it already on kit.co slash trekking pal i mentioned all of the gear that i use to either make videos like this one or my gear that i use when i am hiking out there uh, the only thing i have right here is a gopro which was super helpful especially during summit day because one of the challenges when it comes to taking photos or videos on the trail during summit day is that it gets really really cold that uh, your batteries might die so a good idea is to keep one battery or two close to you close to your body inside of your jacket so that when you get to the summit and you want to take that special picture you do have a reliable battery to use the other thing when it comes to charging your electronics because you're not going to have access to electricity you want to make sure that you have a power bank with you on the mountain this power bank that i use is from anchor 20,000 milliampere, which is pretty strong. So I use this to charge my phone, Alex's phone, our 
cameras, GoPros, and we went through batteries like crazy just trying to document and take a lot of footage on the mountain and at the end of our seven days on the mountain I still had some juice and power on this power brand I highly recommend it that is pretty much it when it comes to packing for Mount Kilimanjaro I will leave a downloadable link in the description box and in the first comments with a checklist that you can use just to help you pack I know it can get a little bit overwhelming and the last thing that you want is to forget about an essential item. There are also instances where, God forbid, you might arrive to the airport and your baggage is lost, which happened to one of our friends, but don't you worry, you can talk to the company and they can help you to rent some gear, bridge the gap, but it's always a good idea to arrive to Tanzania a day or two before just so that you have some wiggle room i hope that you guys found this video to be useful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel it's going to help me tremendously to grow this youtube channel my name is habiba from the trekking pals and i will see you soon on another adventure